Let's dig into distress oxides. What makes them so cool? Do I need both the oxides and the regular distress inks? No. Oop, did I say that? Uh, I'll tell you why I got rid of my distress inks and kept the oxides. And I'm going to show you a bunch of stuff you can do with the oxides. All right. They're more than just an ink pad. Let's get to it. One of the main things I love about oxides is they work on dark cardstock. So if you were to put any kind of regular ink on dark cardstock, unless you're doing heat embossing, it's not going to show up. But Distress Oxides, it does. However, it's not perfect. So I'm going and doing the exact same thing side by side. To the right, I have black cardstock, and to the left, I have white. So I do have to go over the color three, maybe four times, depending on the vibrancy of the color, before it really pops off the dark cardstock or the black cardstock. Obviously, for you, we're using a lighter, darker cardstock, like a gray or a, a blue or something, it probably will be easier. But black, I'm going all in for this demo here. So I do this three times with this color and I dry it each time and you can see it kind of sets into this chalky like finish. That's because oxides are a fusion blend and whatever the formulas, the scientist gods of oxides made, uh, that's how this is. <laughs> that's what they do. So they oxidize. It's a fusion blend of dye and pigment and some other stuff in there. I don't know. I'm not a chemist. But uh, I just know it's pretty cool in what it does. So I'm going to continue going in with rainbow colors here. I do have a free download for you all about Distress Oxides. What makes them unique? How are they different from their regular inks? So that's in the description below. Just click on the link and put in your email address and it will be emailed to you. So here I am again. I'm going to go in with rainbow order. Each color on the black cardstock, I am having to go over it three times uh, just to try to get that very vibrant consistency that I'm getting on the uh, on the white cardstock. Now, as of now, oxides do not come in many cubes like the regular distress inks come in, probably because of the formulation. It's just not something that can be put into a little mini cube, but uh, that's okay. I don't have any minis in my stash at all of any kind because I like full set pads. So oxides are also water reactive, but so are distress inks. So there's no big difference there. But uh, the difference is between the oxides and the inks is you do get that chalky finish once you're done. You may like the chalky finish, you may not. It's, it's a personal preference, and I'll talk about how to not get that chalky finish in just a minute. Another benefit of the oxides is you can layer colors on top of each other, and they will not turn to mud. Only if you dry them between layering. If you've got a wet purple and a wet yellow and you put it together, yeah, it's gonna turn to brown because it's wet. But if you dry the bottom layer, let's say it's yellow, and you dry the yellow and then put the purple over the top, they will not react into each other. So that's a formulation of the oxides, which I very much like, that you can layer one on top of the other on top of the other. And colors that sit across from each other on the color wheel, if you mix them together, they cancel each other out. So you'll typically get like a muddy poo-poo color, <laughs> a brown, a gray, whatever. Uh, but as long as you dry the oxide layers, the colors in between before layering them, they do not mix together, which is why you can see, especially in that top right-hand corner there, why you can see the yellow and the purple and not brown boom so again like i said they are water reactive which is super cool so here is the trick to not having that chalky look and that is distress glaze so all i'm doing is putting some glaze on with a clean part of this dirty microfiber cloth i found a clean section and i'm just basically spreading it on there then i let it sit for a minute and then i buff it off you know like you're waxing a car you put the wax on you let it sit then you buff it off yeah, I know you're thinking a karate kid. Wass them. Wass off. <laughs> That's what we're doing here. All right, so that kind of removes some of the chalky finish, and it also makes your oxides completely waterproof. It has created this non-penetrating layer. So if you go to add any water or anything on top, it's not going to seep into the paper. It's not going to become water reactive. So once you put that glaze on, what you got on that paper is permanent. So 
you got to commit know that you don't want to do any kind of water looks or anything like that and then put the glaze on if you don't have the glaze you can mix vaseline and regular isopropyl alcohol together i was going to demo it here but i don't have any vaseline or i can't find it and i'm all about trying to use what i have but you can give that a, a whirl just goop out some vaseline and add three or four drops of alcohol to it, mix it together, and you'll get something very similar to the Distress Glaze. So if you don't want a chalky look at all, you can add some kind of glazing medium over the top. Now I have this Liquitex glazing medium that I've had in my craft room since I've been doing gel printing and all those things years and years, so I have this. You can also use Mod Podge, which comes in many different finishes. You want to make sure that you're using the Mod Podge that's not the matte finish, obviously. So nothing matte, but put that over the top and it'll give you a nice shiny look and you're removing that chalky finish if you don't like it. Oh, I burnt dinner. What am I going to do? My husband loves wine, so I thought I would try out Bright Cellars. So I went online and I took their quiz. It's a seven question quiz. I answered the questions as best as I could, and then it matched me to wines, which I know absolutely nothing about. I'll be honest with you. So I totally relied on the website and the quiz. And a couple days later, I got my box. First of all, I noticed it was very sturdy in its packaging. All recyclable materials, which is very nice. No wasteful, harmful products for the environment. It comes with wine 101 cards, if you will. So it explains the wine. It tells you what it pairs well with. Uh, so I highly encourage you to check it out. If wine is your jam, I've got a 50% off a first six bottle box in the description below that will put you at $55, which will include the shipping. And this will arrive at your door match to whatever your palette is so be sure to check it out and thanks bright sellers for sponsoring today's video another main reason that i love oxides is you can stamp with them with distress inks when you stamp with them they're typically very splotchy they're not solid because distress inks are mostly for techniques with the oxides you get very solid stamping so I've got this image. This was actually sitting on my desk left over from another video I made. So I just pulled it out and I'm going to use my Misty stamping tool so I can get some multicolored stamping. And it just really gives good impressions. And this time I'm working on craft card stock. Before I worked on black card stock. Now I'm working on craft card stock. And you'll really be able to see how intense the colors are. So the benefit of using the Misty stamping tool or a stamp positioner is I can ink this image up multiple times, different colors if I want, or if I didn't necessarily ink it up great the first time. As long as I don't move the cardstock on the Misty, I'll get good stamping every single time. So I wanna go in and accentuate this bird a little bit. So I'm gonna go in with some different colors here. I think I'll do orange and I'll do purple and I'll basically just keep stamping colors of this bird like I'll keep inking up the bird and stamping the bird and so I like how the bird looks <laughs> I went in with no plan whatsoever then I decided hey let's add some blue to the branches because why not branches can be blue they can be whatever color you want them to be it's your card you can also heat emboss with the oxides because this fusion ink does stay wet a little longer. You can heat emboss with the Distress inks themselves. You have to work faster because it dries faster. But here you've got quite a bit of time to get that embossing powder on and go ahead and heat set it. You can also watercolor with Distress oxides. Now you can watercolor with Distress inks too. You get a more fuller look I feel or fuller is not the right word that's a stupid word Laurel uh, you just get a different look with the oxides I just feel like they're more they're definitely more opaque than the regular inks uh, just a totally different look now I got rid of all of my distress inks once I fell in love with the oxides or I would show you a side-by-side -side comparison but I'm not one for just keeping like every ink on the planet. I have Catherine Puller inks for my regular inks. I have Distress Oxides for Techniques. And I have a couple of different black ink pads for my black inks. And that's it. That's all the inks I have in my stash. That's what made the final cut when I was scaling down because I'm not a store. I don't need every single ink pad on the planet. And I figured I've used a bunch of different ink pads, figured out which ink pad I liked, 
figured out what company I liked, figure out what formulation I liked, and I don't fix what ain't broke. So Catherine Puller inks for my colored inks, oxides for my techniques, and a couple of different color black ink pads, and that is it. All right, so I went around and did a little halo effect or shadow effect or whatever you want to call it with some blue ink or chip sapphire ink, and look how this card looks against that craft card stuck. Ah, it's so pretty. And you could not get this look with regular Distress Inks. Now you can do a little smushing. I'm gonna do some acrylic block smushing. So I added some of the Chip Sapphire Oxide to a block, squirted it with water, and now I'm pressing some watercolor cardstock into the block. Can't see what I'm doing, so I end up switching it around later. Now look, there's some purple in there. I thought that was, that was interesting. So remember, before you add any colors, new colors, or if you're gonna layer colors, you gotta dry the panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry that. Still thought that was so cool that Chip Sapphire has some purple in there. I mean, it makes sense, but still, to be able to see it in person. So here I'm going in with, I think that's Spice Marmalade. I'm Now I'm pressing the block into the paper, you know, so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> now if I had not waited for the blue to dry, that would have just turned into a muddy color. So the benefit and the cool feature of these oxides is, again, you can layer your colors on top of each other, which is super cool because I am layering all colors that would turn to mud if they mix together. So huge cool factor feature for the oxides here. And another reason why they made the final cut of the inks in my craft room and the distress inks themselves did not make the cut. Personal preference. Can you have both? Sure. Do you need both? No, but it's up to you. You know what I mean? So let's look at the final pieces I did. So this was the beginning of the video where I swiped it or swinked it. I hope you know what swinking means directly onto the cardstock. And then I added a little bit of glossy to the top to take away that chalky finish. Here is where we stamped, heat embossed, and watercolored with the oxides. Next up is where we smush directly onto the mat with the leftover colors I had. So cool and vibrant, and here's the acrylic block we just did. But here's what I did and how I turned them into cards. All right, so the first step, that's the acrylic block. I did nothing but flick on a little bit of white paint, and I adhered it to one of the smushed backgrounds that we did at the beginning of the video. Here is the other smushed background. I just added some images from my magic mug that I had to complete that card. And the last one is where we just swinked on the individual colors where I showed you the white and black cardstock comparison. I just die cut that with a large word die that I had. I used a little dog for the tittle, which is the dot of your eye. It sounds like such a dirty word, but it's not. Tittle, tittle, tittle. Anyway, and that's what I did with that card because that background itself really would not have made a good card background because it was basically me demoing. So think about that when you look at your backgrounds or anything that you made. If it's not necessarily your cup of tea or you don't like the colors or it's just not gonna make a good card background, maybe you can pull out your die cuts and see if you can do something with your die cuts to salvage that piece because you don't wanna throw it away. But if you have to throw it away, it's okay, it's just paper. All right, don't forget I have a free download for you. Uh, just click the link in the description below. It's all about distress oxides, the benefits, the comparisons between the oxides and the regular inks. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I will see you for my very next video. What do you want to see? Tell me, tell me, tell me. What do you want my next video to be? Acquiring Minds.